After exploring the beautiful Italian cities of Venice, Florence, and Rome, it was now time to enter the Holy Vatican. Sitting at the entrance to the Vatican is the Fontana della Pigna, or simply the Pine Cone. And interestingly enough, I learned from listening to the Joe Rogan Show that this Pine Cone statue represents the pineal gland, which is of course associated with psychedelics, enlightenment, and your third eye. An interesting curiosity, to say the least. There is a beautiful gallery created in 1810, more or less, because Napoleon's troops came to Rome. They stole 600 pieces of art from the Vatican to be taken to the Louvre. After Napoleon's death, half of the pieces of art that were given back to the Vatican. In the meanwhile, to counterbalance the big loss, this new gallery was created. Huh. You understand why we call this Belvedere? Belvedere in Italian means beautiful view because we are on the peak of the Vatican Hill. Look at the beautiful view here. Oh wow. I understand why Belvedere, beautiful view, because uh, this was countryside. Now, you see, this courtyard is called the octagonal courtyard. Octagonal because of the eight sides. And this is the core, the heart of the Vatican Museums. Mm. Why? Because this was built in 1506 as a garden of orange trees. The first ancient Roman statues, sarcophagi, masks dug out in the city, they were displayed here. 1506. That means 550 years ago. So this is the beginning of the Vatican. Oh wow! You should imagine five centuries ago the popes used to work here with VIPs. Advised the people of Troy not to let the wooden horse within the city wall mm. because it was dangerous. Nobody listened to him and Athena, the goddess that protected Ulysses, she sent a snake from the sea to kill Laomun and his two children. Mm. So what the sculptor Alessandro carved here is the struggle of a man against the snake to save himself and his two children. Mm. They're going to die now. This is the exact moment of the death. Okay. This is 1900 years old. This is wow. the mask, so you see the wrinkles on the face, look at the open mouth. I like the detail of the blood passing in the vein of yeah. his left shoulder. It's absolutely beautiful. So you should imagine, you see the hole on the right thigh? Mm -hmm. You see? Probably he was holding his arm under the chin like this, with the elbow in the hole, in the, in the hole like this. Okay? Mm. So thinking about committing suicide. In any case, it is not important to know who he was, it's important to pay attention to the details. I mean, it's one piece of stone, and look at the, the, the way the muscles are carved. Can you see the, 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 the torsion of the body, the twist of oh, yeah. the body, okay? Very beautiful and important because Michelangelo's art is based on that statue. Oh. Do you remember all the naked men painted in the Sistine Chapel? All those naked men, they look like that statue. Yeah. Translated into paintings. I like the sow, the sow in the baby pig, right? you see? Which one? The, the sow, the female pig. Oh yeah. Sow in the baby pig. This is realistic art. It's an elephant there. And from the room of the animals, we are walking now into the next room, which is the smart room, yeah. Ben Hur, Ben Hur, the church. Yeah. That happened to me a couple of years. No, in the same as Max, it's here. The round basin in the middle is one piece of stone carved 1900 years ago in wow. the golden house of Emperor Nero. So this worked as a fountain in an ancient Roman house. That's one stone? It's one stone. Wow. It's a stone from Egypt called the Porphyry Stone, which is not so popular in uh, North America. It does not exist anymore, this kind of stone. Really? The, 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 the stone quarry just uh, it finished. It's over, but in any case, it is the second hardest stone to carve after the down here. Interesting. 
You see, this ceiling was uh, commissioned by that Pope, Leo Lyon, the 13th, in 19, sorry, in 1888, by sense. That Pope Leo, he died in 1903. He loved archaeology, you can see very well, he was a patron of arts, and he loved photography as well. And since you like taking photos, I'll show you a curiosity. In the middle of the ceiling, do you see there is a baby with a brown box? Yes. That's the first camera made in Italy. The uh -huh. ancestor of your uh, digital camera. Right? Yeah, yeah, the first one. The first Interesting. Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel between 1508 and 1512 at the request of Pope Julius II. It is truly breathtaking to stand underneath it, and over 500 years after it was completed, it is still considered one of the great artistic accomplishments of human civilization. 23 years after it was completed, Michelangelo returned at the request of Pope Clement VII to paint the adjacent wall titled The Last Judgment, Another beautiful and breathtaking painting by Michelangelo. It took him seven years to complete. In the dining room, sir, to wash their hands. So they did not have forks or knives, sir, like today. But they used to eat with the, uh, by using the hands. But they need to wash their hands. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. attention to the eyes. You see, these are statues of Bacchus or Dionysus, the god of the wine. Now, all the eyes, they look like sleeping, all the statues, but in reality, all these statues, they have the glass-faced eyes or painted eyes, like in that case. Oh, okay. So they look like real people, mm. like real statues. All the other statues they look like sleeping or like dead, mm -hmm. okay? So in reality, all these ancient statues, they are the painted eyes or glass-faced eyes, as you can see in these days. But not only the eyes, even the skin, the hair, the clothes. Oh, really? It was painted with the bright colors. Never thought of that. As you can see here. You see this is a child. You see some fragments of pigments in the cloth. So you can see clearly that all these ancient statues are painted. Yeah. All the colors painted. And since you like taking photos, take a photo of that. It's beautiful. 1888. You see the two women there? They symbolize arts. And they are making a sketch of the two symbols of Rome. St. Peter's Dome on the right corner and the Coliseum on the left corner. Those are two symbols. They were conceived always to be hung by the wall and never, never to be, to be put on the floor as a rug. Okay? Mm. Tapestries on the left side, 1524, they were woven by using silk, silver, wool, and gold. There is so much gold, so much silver in this beautiful tapestry. Really? They are woven by using the cross stitch technique. Look at the details. These are events from Jesus' life. See, this is the three kings handing over the gifts to baby Jesus in the mm. heart. You can see there, Joseph, Mary, the beauty star. You see the elephant up there on the left corner. So every detail is so beautiful. You see also the frame with all the flowers. Consider that these tapestries, they are woven by using the cross-stitch technique and they were made five centuries ago. Why are the tapestries so popular, mainly in the north of Europe, like in England, Scotland, France? Because they absorb the heat, mm. they absorb the humidity, so they make the castles, the room, warm. Okay, that's why they are so popular. Oh. And you can see that these tapestries, that Jesus uh, Ascension, going up to heaven and showing his stigmatas. So the stigmatas there. And these tapestries are damaged by the bugs. By the what? The bugs, the bugs. insects, oh. bugs. 
Right. So sometimes they have to send these tablets to a school of elderly nuns in order to restore them. Mm. The small three tablets here are called the massacre of the innocents. All the babies under the age of two, they were condemned to death by King Herod. Because the three kings, the three magi, they were looking for baby king, baby Jesus. So he made kill all the babies under the age of two. Very dramatic, see? In the meanwhile, Jesus, baby Jesus went to Egypt with Mary and Joseph. Look at the Look at the Okay, you can see the, lo the largest tapestry of the Vatican collection. That's Jesus' resurrection. Jesus just came out of the tomb, and do you see the tombstone under Jesus' feet? That's a mistake. Oh. Because in the Gospels it is written that the tombstone was rolled. Yes. Rolled means round, not rectangular. But even though it is rectangular, as we walk forward, you will see that that tombstone is rolling to the right as a moving perspective. Hmm. Keep on looking and keep on watching. Keep on walking and keep on watching. <laughs> Even Jesus' eyes are moving. You see? Absolutely beautiful. That's the transparency. Look at this. You see? Over the water with the wine yeah. going down in the water. There you can see Jesus Christ during the dinner in a mouse. Down here, a, a cat and a dog fighting for a bone. <laughs> so sacred and profane in the same time. If you go to the other side, And these are not the only optical illusions of this gallery. If you pay attention to the ceiling, the ceiling looks like that in reality, no. The ceiling is painted. In oh, the really? There wow. Is no plaster, no reliefs, no statues, everything in the ceiling. Is wow. Painted. Yeah, I thought it was plaster. Uh -huh. That's pretty cool. That's very How do you get the plot? Three dimensionality, it's easy. In English, it's a piece of cake. Just to paint the shadows, we get the tree. Mm -hmm. Painting the shadows, we get the three dimensionality. And look at the next gallery, which is magnificent. Oh, yeah. It's the longest gallery of Europe. Try not to stop too long by the door. It's the longest one. Okay, now this is called the gallery of the geographical maps for painters. Because on the left and on the right side you can see 42 geographical maps reporting Italy in 1584. 1584 means no Google Maps. So this is the first example of Google Maps. Ah. Now you know the shape of Italy. Italy looks like a female boot. Yes. So the heel of the boot is in the southeast, that region. That's Puglia. Next time you come back to Italy, don't miss it. It's beautiful. Really? Okay. Sicily tomorrow. Yes. The football ball. That's upside down because this is from the point of view of the Vatican. So all the regions on the left side are upside down. Ah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Panormus in Latin. This is a good town, Palermo. It's good. Yes. Very good. Related to the region on your left and on your right side. Okay. In reality, since you like to do you should take it backwards. If you turn back, this is the point of view. They walk up there, okay? Mm. So they walk up there to the Belvedere Palace. That's why we have to see the ceiling from this point. 
I see. It's beautiful. It looks like a seahorse. Eh? Oh, it does. The Gran Canale. down inside the oh, wow. because some angels rebelled against God and as a punishment they were sent to the to come to man. That's the world the famous Saint Peter's Square. That's the line that you just skipped. You see that? Oh, line? no way. So wow. Waiting the line one hour under the sun to go through the security controller. Wow. Skipped all that because of that special exit. <laughs> the Definitely and, worth it. Thank you. And this is the preparing for the Pope's audience. So, so there will be a, uh, the audience next Wednesday. So they're still they are starting oh. to prepare for the Pope's audience. Okay. And the world famous balcony from which the new Pope is presented to the world is that one up there. See? That's the balcony that you see. Is that the only time he comes to the balcony? No, he goes there twice a year. Oh. On Christmas Day, on Eastern Sunday at 12 o'clock. Mm. Those are the only times, the two times the Pope. This is the St. Peter's Saint Basilica, Peter's yes. It's one of the most magnificent churches in the world. This was started in 1506. And it was completed in 1626. That means 120 years, 20 popes, 10 chief architects to build St. Peter's Basilica. Wow. And remember that this basilica was built on top of a graveyard. Here there was a graveyard, mm -hmm. a cemetery, 1900 years ago. Peter, the first pope, was crucified nearby in the circus of Caligula, which was over there. After the crucifixion, he was buried in this graveyard precisely. Wow. It symbolizes Mary, in this case Mary, holding the dead body of her son after the deposition from the cross. So what Michelangelo comes here is the grief of the mother holding the dead body of her son after the crucifixion. Okay? And can you see the difference between Jesus' naked body, so beautiful, and Mary's Absolutely. It looks like a, looks like a butter, when you talk about it, but it's a smile. Here because inside that altar you can read the Sanctus, that means a saint, John Paul II. Double P means Pope, Papa. So that's where Pope John Paul II is buried. Oh, wow. You know, Voitila, he ruled the church in Cunha, Los Angeles. It's unbelievable that they took, you know, this, this much effort and uh -huh. thought to come build this thing. If you take 120 years to build this, and then 200 additional years to decorate this. That area is called the Confessio of St. Peter's. 
And exactly down there, that's where Peter is there. Exactly oh, down there. Wow. Okay. 27 feet deep in the ground, more or less. That's where Peter is. So under is under that altar. Under that altar. So that's where the Pope celebrates the Mass. Okay. Michelangelo, the architecture of masterpiece. Remember the last 20 years of his life, Michelangelo was a chief architect. Did he actually work on it? Like, put, his, put his hands on it? For 20 years. Wow. You see, this is the best view of St. Peter's Dome. You see how beautiful it is. The highest building in the city. And you can see there is a bunch of people walking in the balcony. You can see under the windows above the inscription. Yes. That's a bunch of people because those people, those are visitors, walking up there. And then from there, off church. Oh, it's perfect. In the Vatican now, without a doubt, the most impressive building I've ever seen. This is absolutely spectacular. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice, but it's, it's unbelievable. 150 years it took to build it. Some of the greatest artists ever. Under this altar is where Peter was buried. And the church was built right on top of him. Right here. Right here under this altar. The Swiss Guard is an armed forces unit that protects the Pope and the Vatican Palace and serves as the Vatican's military unit. It was established in 1506 by Pope Julius II and is one of the oldest military units in continuous operation.
St. Peter's Square. I guess that concludes the Vatican tour. Really special and I'm really glad I came to see it. I highly recommend you go see the Vatican. It's, uh, it's indescribable really. It's just it's flat out the most beautiful church, the most beautiful building you can imagine. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Time to go get a pizza, maybe a few beers, and get some sleep. Flying to Sicily tomorrow. Time to uh, time to move on. See the Mediterranean Sea. So uh, see you when I get there.